What's up guys, I'm Dan Jong. Welcome back to my channel. So today, I'm, I got a really special guest here. We got Simon here, uh, AKA Simonster. Uh, by the way, that's a great name. Did you come up with that name? I didn't come up with that name. Oh, okay. yeah. Some friends of mine came up with that name. Yeah. Um, some friends from Japan and it, it stuck. Wow, you should, did you ever like pay him or buy him dinner or something? No, no but I should. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know who the, name, oh, yeah. who the name originated with, but oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a great name. I, I need some kind of name like that. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Monster. Right. Yeah, it doesn't really It doesn't work as well. No. It? <laughs> We're gonna have a little chat. I don't want to really call it an interview. But I'm gonna try to expose every single detail about you. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to like talk over and try not to know each other a little bit. So all right. Cool. Sounds ready for some questions. Ready. Gotcha. Okay. So first question. So what do you do for a living? So I do a, a few things for a living. So I used to be a physiotherapist, and I do that a little bit when I'm back home in a, in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I perform in a show in Vegas. So I do some break dancing and some acrobatics. Um, the type of things that you see me do online. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I teach calisthenics workshops and um, and make calisthenics programs and tutorials that I have online. So I actually found out one of your videos um, back in I think 2014. Yeah. It was you performing at like a boxing stage or something. Remember that one? Oh yeah. Like the very first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when I saw you, like I saw you performing really high level calisthenics, but as well with really high level b boying or break dancing, if you want to call it like that. Because like I had a background with b boying as well, yep. so yeah, I, I, I cool. felt like we like, kind of connected, yeah. although I didn't know you at the time. Yeah, like I loved that video so much, I actually downloaded it. Cool. And then <laughs> with the original music, yeah, I think the video got shut down or something. Yeah, copyright, copyright. But I still have the original video with the original music. <laughs> That's great. I don't think I do. You don't have it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I can send it to you actually. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I wanted to ask you like, how do you manage to train like calisthenics? b-boying, tumbling, or anything else um, you do? Yeah, so um, I try to just pick a few things to focus on at the, at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I generally train my strength and skills separately, and I tend to train skills before I train strength, so that way I'm not fatigued when I'm training strength. Right, yeah. um, with that being said, I like to train skills when the muscles are fresh, so I don't train them after a strength ses session or the following day after a heavy strength session. Um, so that I can get the most out of my skill sessions. Mm -hmm. And then I try to give myself enough time to recover. So between, mm -hmm. um, between high volume or mm -hmm. high intensity training for muscle groups, I try to give myself about 48 hours between. Got so it. I might go from training, um, leg training to train some skills with my upper body, mm -hmm. and then training some um, skills with my lower body on the same yeah. day that I train some upper body strength. Right. Yeah. So what determines you to decide which one's a skill and which one's a strength move? Yeah, so strength moves are things which I find really demanding on, on my muscles, so mm -hmm. things like plant. Yeah. Um, obviously there is some crossover between strength and skills. Mm -hmm. um, skills are things which involve more coordination, mm -hmm. um, they're less fatiguing. They're not mutually exclusive, you have things which have elements of strength and skill. Mm -hmm. So for example, a planche um, has a large skill component, you have right. to be able to balance on your hands while you, mm -hmm. while you do that. Yeah. Um, a one-handed handstand when performed with poor technique has a large strength component right. because you, you need to strain a lot, but when mm -hmm. it's performed with good technique, mm -hmm. um, it's less demanding on your muscles. So yeah. yeah, they're not mutually exclusive, but things are more skill dominant and some things are more strength dominant. Yeah, so like b boy and tumbling will be more like skill oriented. Exactly, yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a good solid strength foundation, training yeah. something like a, a head spin mm -hmm. um, is not very taxing on your muscles. You can right. train that for an hour, you might get a little bit of fatigue in your neck muscles, yeah. um, but it's not going to give you the same sort of fatigue and recovery demands that training yeah. planche push-ups or heavy bench press or squats will. Right. I'm so impressed by like how many disciplines you actually like, train and then like you actually got to really high level in all that. Because for me, I'm barely staying not i'm not even like a high level in calisthenics but i'm, I'm barely training just calisthenics only but you're doing like well, legs tumbling breaking yeah <laughs> like it's very impressive thank you like how long have you been training about uh a little over 15 years 15 years wow yeah. i initially started with um my parents got me into gymnastics i did that for about a year oh, and then okay. i transferred to break dancing they were teaching break dancing at the same facility where i learned gymnastics right yeah um, once i tried that out i stopped gymnastics and moved more into break dancing yeah. since then i've done some um some circus i've done some martial arts mm -hmm. um some brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah. and which i enjoyed for a period of time and, yeah um, some calisthenics, tricking, mm -hmm. a lot of disciplines. Yeah, I feel like we have really similarities when he first started because I actually first started with breakdancing as well. And then I found a, I, I found a couple dancers doing planche. Yeah. So I started to get really interested in like how to train about it. Junior? Junior and <laughs> B-Boy, I don't know, you know, B-Boy Pop. 
I join every now the gamblers. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there are a couple guys like Akujo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those guys doing crazy, crazy planches. So I wanted to learn how to learn it, and then I just kind of transitioned slowly, phased out of break dancing, and then went more into calisthenics. Yeah, it was a similar path with me. Right. I saw Junior doing planche and went, "Oh, I really want to be able to do that." <laughs> so do you mind sharing like what your current focus is in terms um, of like good. strength skills? Yeah, so at the moment I'm just trying to improve my pulling strength um, a little right. bit more. So my background's breakdancing, it's mm -hmm. mostly pushing strength, so yeah. that's, that's what you predominantly see from me. Yeah. Um, that's certainly a disparity in my pulling and pushing right. strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just trying to um, trying to close that gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, working on things like improving my one arm pull up, my weighted uh, pull ups, and um, front lever. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen you do like one arm chin up stuff. Yeah, there's, oh. a, there's a couple of videos floating around. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, but I think just looking at your biceps though, like I don't, I don't know if you need any more pulling. Like <laughs> you got all, you got all that from probably like planching, right? Yeah, straight on. Yeah, yeah, um, planch work. Yeah. Yeah, like we just met like an hour ago, and then as soon as he walked in, like I, I, I was actually really surprised like how big you were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was expecting a little bit smaller. Yeah, but not like this. Big. Like it's like pretty huge for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How how. How much you weigh right now? Uh, I think I'm about 79 kilos. 79 kilos. kilos. Yeah, yeah, that's a good chunk of weight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you you mentioned about um, your the goals and strength skills, but do you have yeah. any like flexibility or mobility goals? Not really. I just at the moment I'm just trying to maintain my um, my flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, I've lost a little bit of um, pike or forward fold flexibility mm -hmm. from what I used to have, so I'm trying to yeah. at least maintain what I've got yeah. or, or get that back to the level that it was. But you can um, touch your toes though. Right? I, I can touch right. my toes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm talking more about things like um. You know, putting my forehead on my shins, yeah, 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 yeah for right. things like um, pike hollow backs. Right. Yeah. Um, and then maintaining my overhead mobility, which mm -hmm. is a challenge with um, an increased um, volume of, of pulling strength work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So trying to keep my, my mobility there for handstands and for um, things like hollow backs. Yeah. So you you just need like a minimum requirement for the mobility just to perform whatever the skills you want to learn. Yeah. I, I don't want to. Um, you know, I don't want to. Be working really hard towards my front lever and one arm pull ups, and um, and see that I've lost my lost my hollow back flexibility in six months and I can't do it anymore. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, just trying to maintain that. Yeah. So when I discover you through like Instagram and YouTube, like you always execute everything, like all the exercises you perform is like in a, such a high level, like really pretty, like perfect form. But um, do you have any like footage or old videos of you like training and then like failing? Like I kind of like um, see you like over the. Uh, there's yeah. definitely some fails online. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty bad at backing up my videos, so no. oh, I'm, I'm trying to do yeah. that now. But I don't have much uh, much footage from from my old days. No old footage. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think there's some videos yeah. maybe on on Facebook of mm -hmm. me um, of me training where you'll definitely see some fails and some um, yeah. some sacrifice in form. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you can share it with me, it'll be great because like it would be very inspirational for a lot of people. Like you start from like. I'm like really bad, and then you get like really good, and people like to see that actually. Yeah, yeah, it's progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah, rather than just see you in like such a perfect form all, all the time. Yeah, I think it, I can show you some um, yeah. some pulling movements today. You'll see a lot of um. <laughs> oh, that was pulling movement. <laughs> yeah, I want to see your pushing movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been doing that for so long. So yeah. um, you know, since the days that I had a camera myself, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've been at a reasonably high level. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see if I've got some friends or some old footage that I can dig up. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So as an accessory movement, like do you do any like lifting or like lifting weights to complement your training, or do you don't do anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the main thing I do is weighted calisthenics. So mm -hmm. I'll do things like weighted handstand push-ups or weighted yeah. pull-ups to um yeah. to help with the skills that I'm trying to mm -hmm. achieve and, and help build my strength gen mm -hmm. generally. Um, in terms of um weights, I do mm -hmm. weight training predominantly for lower limbs. So I do things like weighted squats. Right. Yeah. Um, but I do very little um upper body weights unless it's with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So to overcome a plateau, I might um, include some, you know, straight arm shoulder flexion for Sweet planche or um, cable pull downs for, for things like a front yeah. lever or lever. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the majority of my training yeah. is, is body weight or weighted calisthenics. Right. So you don't do any like big movements like deadlift or like bench press, nothing like that? I occasionally do bench press if I'm training with some friends just because mm -hmm. it's a little fun and I, right. I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but no, I try to make my training um, systematic and um, with a very clear purpose. Mm -hmm. So I, I often think before I do an exercise, why am I doing this exercise? Right, yeah. Is it conducive to my goals? Is there a better option that I can do? Yeah, this is actually what I, like how I do as well. But actually uh, I do, when I lift weights, I mainly do like um, dumbbell work. Yeah. So I can 
because I have a little bit of asymmetry yeah, yeah, yeah. and most people correct any imbalances. Yeah, yeah, so I'm trying to like um, trying to not compensate as much with the other. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, the the exercises that you do should reflect your goals. So if you're trying to get jacked. Lifting weights is a great way to do right, that. There's yeah, no yeah. reason why you should go yeah, and do calisthenics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to be really proficient at calisthenics, then the majority of your training should um, should be calisthenics. Right, right. Yeah, and then calisthenics definitely build muscle, as you can see from Simon's big arms and <laughs> my <laughs> okay arms. So, you know, I have literally actually a perception issue. It's like every time I see someone else, they, they look bigger than me. Yeah? Right. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a mental issue or something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. Right? Yeah. I mean, apparently he's 90, 79 kilos and I'm 86. Yeah. 85, 86. So I should be bigger than you, but with my mind, I look so, so much tighter than you. <laughs> I think I have a little frame, and I think that you can only see um, see upper body, and your legs are, are definitely much much bigger legs. than mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because like I actually try to, um, I don't know if you know, but I try to not try my legs as much as I can. Yeah. Because I'm low, actually um, in, innately like lower body dominant. Yeah. So even if I just do a little bit of leg movement, they'll just lower right, right yeah. quick. And then like this is me not training legs for like maybe four or five years. Okay, wow. Yeah. 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 See, I'm the opposite. I need to do a lot of work to right. have a, a tiny bit of muscle <laughs> on my legs. Yeah, I actually envy that actually. I'd rather have a skinnier leg and then better perform with planks or something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have any goals in squats or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think there are some common mistakes that beginners tend to make when they first start calisthenics? Any advice for them? Yeah, so I think the main thing is um, spreading themselves too thin. So trying to train too many movements at once. Right, yeah. Um, I've yeah. done that before. <laughs> yeah, and that can, really, um, that can really hurt your motivation as well because mm -hmm. if you spread yourself too thin, your progress is, is pretty slow. You can yeah. only devote so much time and energy towards each thing, mm -hmm. um, which can be really frustrating and you can lose interest and not want to train. Mm -hmm. So I recommend just picking a few goals, focusing on that, mm -hmm. um, seeing improvement with it, mm -hmm. and um, that's a great way to make progress. Right. So for a beginner, let's say you're trying to give advice for a beginner. Yeah. Um, would you say having a goal in planche, hands and push-up, like front lever, one arm chin, all that is too much or? Yeah, I, I would say for an absolute beginner, um, having so many goals is um, yeah, yeah is, is quite challenging. So uh, training, you know, I would say pick two or three goals or three, yeah. max. Um, I generally encourage to pick different um, reciprocal muscles. So mm -hmm. yeah. train one pulling move, one pushing move. So right. a great example is train planche and train front lever simultaneously. Right. Um, obviously those will, will help with the other skills. So training planche is gonna help with your handstand push-ups, training mm -hmm. front lever will help with your one-arm pull-ups. Right. Um, but I think if you spread yourself too thin, it can be can be really frustrating. I had a, I had a sim similar mistake when I was um, when I was much younger. So I think I had like five, six different goals. Yeah. And then when you're actually beginning, um, you feel like you're progressing so quick and everything because, um, but that's mostly because you're such a, in a low yeah, level. Yeah, you make new yeah. Right, yeah, new yeah. no matter what you do, you're gonna you know, gain and then you're gonna suddenly hit a plateau within, I don't know, exactly, I guess, yeah. time frame. But, yeah, so yeah. I think for an absolute beginner, if you have goals of, um, that's another thing to mention, if you mm -hmm. have um, long-term goals, like uh, there's very few people who achieve a planche in months. It generally takes years. Yeah. So if you have a goal of, of I want to be able to full planche mm -hmm. as an absolute beginner, mm -hmm. it can be really frustrating and you're not going to reach that goal for years. Right. So what I encourage is that you pick a few things that you want to achieve and set small milestones along the way. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to hold a tuck planche for 10 seconds in, yeah. in a couple of months. Okay, great. Right. That's a goal you can work toward. Yeah. Um, it's concrete, you can see progress, you can tick it off and, and stay motivated. Right, yeah. So same thing, go, it's like the same thing applies to the weights too. Like you don't say, oh, I'm gonna squat 200 kilos. You say, oh, I'm gonna start with 20 kilos. Exactly, kilos. yeah. Same thing, but people don't really think like that in class. Yeah, well, it's a little bit more, um, it's, it's, you know, it's very intuitive with weights. Mm -hmm. I, I wanna add some more weight so right. I can squat X amount now, mm -hmm. next month I want to be able to add five kilos to yeah, that. Very easy. Yeah, um, I think with with calisthenics, especially the movements that a lot of people want, like planche and front lever, um, there's it's it, very confusing about how how to see progress. So yeah. you, you generally progress by yeah. increasing the lever arm of your body, moving yeah. from shapes like tuck to straddle to fall. Yeah. Um, and it can be very difficult to make very concrete um, concrete um, postures 
that you can replicate each time and you can really track progress with. Yeah, and yeah. with that being said, it's it's like the option with a with increasing weights. If you can bench 100 kilos and you want to be able to bench 110 kilos, it's very easy to progress. You mm -hmm. can progress 102.5, yeah. 105, 107.5, yeah. and get there. To bridge the gap between a, a um, tuck planche and a straddle planche mm -hmm. is more difficult, and um, it's it's hard to find very um, reliable positions that you can replicate. Right, so I think that's, that's why it's so important to like write down like what kind of progressions you're currently working on and exactly like how, like, and exactly to what degree, like say for example, like for planche lean, for example, um, you never know how many, how much lean you're getting. Yeah. So I will like generally advise people to actually use a ruler or like a tape measure. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm yeah. the same, yeah. Right. So I think some, some movements are really simple to replicate. So mm -hmm. for example, a tuck planche on the, on the floor. Mm -hmm. If your arms are straight and your legs are off the ground yeah, so and your yeah. knees are off the ground, you're doing a tuck planche. Yeah. The second that your knees touch the ground, you fade. Right. Um, with a planche lean, it's a little bit more challenging. Mm -hmm. So one day you might come in, feel great, and you might lean. 20 centimeters forward. Yeah. Um, the next day, you, you might be a little bit fatigued, not feeling so motivated. You might leave, leave 10 centimeters forward and feel that you're doing the same yeah. the same thing, yeah. but you're not. Um, and the goal with any strength training is to progress over time, right, right. and you need to overload to make gains. Mm -hmm. So, I find with the movements that are very hard to replicate, and it's hard to know exactly how hard you're pushing yourself mm -hmm. and how far you're leaning. Mm -hmm. um, that it's good to measure and find a way to keep that objective. Yeah. So you can measure the distance from your hands to the wall mm -hmm. and um, make your head just touch the wall for a planche lean, yeah. or you can put your hands in the same spot every time and measure how far you, how, how close your feet come to your hands. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of ways to do it. Right. So every time I see you, like, you perform everything in like such a high performance. So I feel like in my mind, like, you never get injured, but have you been ever like injured before? Yeah, you... I've had yeah? plenty of injuries. Plenty of injuries, yeah. yeah. Um, so some of the more serious injuries that I've had, um, I've ruptured my adductor longus tendon. I've lost it off the bone. So I ripped that off the bone in uh, 2014 or 15. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I had a long-term um, tendinopathy from training head spins, mm -hmm. and one day I slipped on some water and it snapped. <laughs> I had a left shoulder dislocation in 2000. And Eight from 2009. Okay. Um, and a subsequent reconstruction. Yeah. I've had a meniscal tear in my right knee. Those were both jujitsu injuries. Mm -hmm. um, dislocated my finger recently. Oh, good one. Yeah. Oh, it looks bruised actually. Yeah, I can send you the video of when it was out of place. <laughs> oh, um, you good? Yeah, I jumped okay. into a performing. I jumped into a handstand. And I just hit my finger. So just right. Like, so like all their injuries mostly come from like performing and like any, like maybe breaking, not much from calisthenics? Um, so my serious injuries have predominantly come from jiu-jitsu and that's the main reason that I stopped because I right, wanted yeah. to continue with calisthenics mm -hmm. and um, take that to a high level. Um, I've had a lot of, I'm often injured with, um, you know, smaller self-limiting annoying injuries. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that the way to progress is just to find ways to train around that. So mm -hmm. I don't encourage anyone to push through pain and to to keep training in, mm -hmm. into pain. Yeah. But if you enter something, there's often still something else that you can practice and improve with mm -hmm. um, while you allow that to heal. Yeah. yeah. So for example, if you've hurt your knee, you can spend a lot of time training handstands mm -hmm. if you can do that safely and make some real gains there. Mm -hmm. So it's a good way to address weaknesses and train things that you otherwise wouldn't give uh, right. give much attention to and, mm -hmm. and still progress through. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So sometimes it can be a bit of a blessing in disguise. Right. Yeah, and then sometimes you get yeah you don't you don't even know your weaknesses are sometimes, and then you get to work on it just because you're injured in other yeah. areas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, because I see a lot of people when they get injured at certain areas, they just completely yeah they take a break from like all the workouts. Yeah, but I think it's really important to like try to find some movements that doesn't hurt you. Exactly. Yeah, so you don't lose that gains you made over the period of some years of um, working out. You know. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes rest isn't isn't the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. So a lot of tendon injuries, you see people um, get a tendon problem and, yeah. and they, they say movements hurt, so I better rest completely. Yeah. And they do, their tendon feels fine. Mm -hmm. but when they come back into training, it's very deconditioned and they yeah. it's, it hurts again. Right. So um, often a better yeah. approach to take there would be to reduce your training volume yeah. and intensity and gradually build toward, um, toward where yeah. you're at. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to me with golfer cell So I've had that for a while. So uh, years ago, like uh, the golfer's elbow happened on my um, forearm, and then I rested it for about three, two to three months. Mm -hmm. It went away. As soon as I start pulling, 
it came back right away because I didn't do any. Of yeah, that. yeah, and it's it's deconditioned and it's, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I, a much um, better approach would probably have been to reduce your training volume, find some exercises that don't hurt, yeah. and rehab it back to health. Right. Yeah, okay. I've had the same thing with um with a bicep tendinopathy from training planche. Yeah. So I hurt my finger mm -hmm. and um, I had to do planche with my hands supinated or hands yeah. backwards, which is very stressful on the bicep right. tendons. As a result, I, I got a bicep tendinopathy and my bicep would yeah. hurt when I started doing planche. Um, so I couldn't train at the same intensity. But what I found was if I reduced the intensity to a tuck planche, I could do it pain free. Mm -hmm. And I did some long duration tuck planche holds just to keep my muscle mass, do some volume with my biceps and gradually progress back toward a straddle and full planche. Got it. So we talked a lot about our, your training side, yep. but I just want to see about your personal side as well. So besides when you're not training, um, what do you like to do? Like you play like video games when you like reading, like you do yeah. anything else? Um, <laughs> yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy some video games. I do like reading. Mm -hmm. um, I like reading a lot of, um, things about um, you know moral philosophy and mm -hmm. consciousness and those sorts of topics. So mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy books from a guy named Sam Harris and mm -hmm. his podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I like hiking and traveling, experiencing new cultures, mm -hmm. new foods, um, and I love coffee, so I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, yeah but generally- I'm from Australia, so. Yeah, yeah I'm from Melbourne, so <laughs> <laughs> we all drink a lot of coffee. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, generally I think that the same things that most people enjoy, spending time with friends, going out to eat, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, interesting that you mentioned about hiking because yeah. like, with me, like after I'm done with my own training, I actually don't really like to do anything else, especially on the active side. So yeah, I like just laying on my bed. So I, I feel somewhat the same. I don't yeah. like to do training that's going to interfere with progress then, um, toward my goals. Yeah. So I don't like to do much cardio. I don't like yeah. running. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't, I don't like to do anything that's yeah. going to take energy away or progress yeah. away from the things that I'm trying to work yeah. towards. That being said, the hikes that I generally like to do are, yeah. aren't very strenuous. It's mostly to go out and see nature, spend yeah. time with friends, and mm -hmm. if there's like a little bit of, well, there's like a one percent chance I'm going to get injured, I try not to do the, ex the activity. Yeah, especially with like football or soccer. Like Koreans love soccer. Yeah, and like especially in the military that I was actually just got out about a year ago, and then like everybody just wants to play soccer in the military. Yeah, and then like I try my best to actually get out of the situation, so I wanted to play. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's um, that's one thing that we that we're very lucky to have yeah. in calisthenics is that you're just training in a very closed environment, which is just you, and you're in total control of what you do. You don't have someone there trying to tackle you or inflict right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you or or yeah. prevent you from performing the yeah. skill. Um, so we're very lucky that we can yeah. really um, mitigate injury um, mm -hmm. just by training smart, um, more so than other sports can. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically you're saying if you get injured in calisthenics, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes freak accidents happen, but yeah. exactly. Yeah. Sometimes freak accidents happen. Um, this is coming from a guy who's had a myriad of injuries. I think I've had more injuries than, than um, almost anyone. Right, if you're yeah. trying to push the limits in any sport, you are yeah. going to be risking injury. Yeah. Um, yeah. So don't don't feel discouraged if you are. If yeah. You are yeah. It's just so amazing. Like he like kept going back to his high um, high level of training, and even after all that injury, like sounds like you went through some like serious injuries. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, definitely a lot of them could have been. Um, could have been prevented, you know. A, a lot of my injuries came from jujitsu. I got very heavily mm -hmm. um, fascinated <laughs> by jujitsu, yeah. um, and spent a lot of my time training that, and really put calisthenics um, mm -hmm. as a as a secondary yeah. um, discipline to train. Mm -hmm. if I hadn't have done that, I probably would have had a much less much less injuries. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then better performance, probably. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can get better from that. But, <laughs> yeah. So I think I got to know a few things about Simon. So um, before we conclude the video, uh, do you mind sharing some of your future plans? Yeah, so um, at the moment I'm, I've got a few um, ebooks or tutorials online. So mm -hmm. I've got one up on my website for the planche, mm -hmm. one up for the handstand. So I'd like to continue with that and right. cover skills like the human flag and the front right. lever. Um, and just continue to make, make um, educational content about calisthenics and mm -hmm. the type of skills that I do. Yeah. Teach people how to train for it and do yeah. more workshops. So, that's the main um, thing that I'm working on at yeah. the moment. So are you done with performing now? Um, at the end of this year, I'll, I'll probably do some freelance performing, nice, um, yeah. some, some break dancing yeah. type of performances, but yeah, yeah, my focus will switch. I'll, I'll go back to predominantly doing um, tutorials, workshops, and uh, being a physiotherapist. Right, so you'll be moving back to Australia now? Yeah, yeah. Permanently? Yeah. Sweet, yeah. yeah oh. So I have, a, I have a daughter there, so I want to be close to her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One day I could maybe visit you or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be, be like, great. Yeah. yeah. All right, Simon. 
Thanks so much for having me. Cool. Yeah, I awesome, really that. enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and then I uh, look forward to your workshop tomorrow. Cool. Thank you. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Cool.